I'm going to read a bit from my new book, Runaway Robot, which comes out in May. And I'm going to read a little bit about Alfie, the hero, who finds himself in the lost property office of an airport, which is a vast cavernous space, all very modern and high-tech and eco. And the person who's showing him round, the light follows her round. So when she goes away, the light goes away. In the bit that I'm reading, he's just past the shelf where there's a kind of big helmet that seems to be looking at him. He's gone past that. He's, looking, he's found a hand now. There was a hand on the shelf, but it wasn't my hand. It was huge, three times the size of a human hand. It had long, pointy fingers made of steel. And when I tried to pick it up, it was so heavy I could hardly lift it. I had to carry it over my shoulder like a soldier carrying a rifle. We passed the helmet thing again. It was definitely looking at me this time. This time it was definitely not a trick of the light. Its eyes flickered blue. I tried to hurry past it, but happy to help was a way ahead of me now, and the light followed her. I could see the cone of light ahead, but everything around me was in darkness. Then, out of the darkness, something grabbed me. I didn't want to look, but I had to. A metal hand, but this one was on the end of a metal arm and the metal arm was attached to the shoulder of a massive metal body and the massive metal body was lying flat on the shelf and at one end of the metal body was the helmet with the flickering blue eyes armadillo style plated steel fingers curled around my flesh the hand moved my hand up and down I was nearly rigid with fear then something flashed across my brain are you, I said, shaking hands with me I'm delighted to meet you I'm used to that voice now but the first time I heard that voice, it was a bit of a shock. It's a voice that could stop traffic. I wish you could hear it. A mixture of wind and steel, like bagpipes playing inside a washing machine, but with words. Is this your, your hand? I said, turning ground so it could see the hand hanging over my shoulder. I can answer almost any question. Is this your hand? I'm sorry, I'm unable to answer that question. The helmet turned towards me. Two eyes set in two huge dark pits, spark blue as they saw me. The mouth was as wide as a letterbox and burned with an electric yellow fire when it spoke. Imagine looking into the slot of a toaster and you'll know what I mean. In fact, there was a slight smell of burning electricity. Wires and flickering valves stuck out of the top of his head as if he'd been in a terrible accident. Not gonna lie, I didn't really know what a valve was at the time, although I know all about them now. I tried to stay calm. I could see that there was a catch inside the metal hand that more or less matched the catch inside the handless wrist. Hold your wrist up, I said. I am your obedient servant. Great. I've never had an obedient servant before. Do you know how this fastens? I am the world's most knowledgeable robot. I can answer almost any question. So do you know how to put this hand back on then? I'm sorry I'm unable to answer that question. And now, the national anthem. God save our gracious king. Then this thing started to sing. Well, not sing exactly, but I don't know what else to call the noise it was making. It was not like human singing, more like a tractor singing with the backing track of steam and hammers. And suddenly I thought, when she heard all this noise, happy to help, would come back and help me out of this situation. And then mid-chorus, it stopped singing and leaned forward as though it was trying to think of something. It is good manners to stand during the national anthem. I am standing. You're the one who's sitting down. The metal suit did not speak or move. Maybe I've been a bit rude. Can you be rude to a chunk of metal? What even was it? Some kind of robot? I tried to make up for it by starting a different conversation. Are you in lost property because you've lost something? Or are you in lost property because you're lost? I mean, are you the lost thing or are you the loser? I have got lost. Inside the suit, I could hear cogs clicking and wheels whirring, and I thought it might be the sound of robot tears. I said, should we try to put your hand back on, thinking this might cheer it up? It was not the sound of robot tears. It was the sound of robot effort as it tried to stand up. Its eyes flashed blue, its mouth burnt bright orange, its helmet ducked into the aisle, arms reached out, one leg steadied itself on the floor. Then I was waiting for the other leg to appear, but there was no other leg. Whoa, I said, don't stand up, you've only got one leg. It is customary to stand during the national anthem. Yeah, but not if you've only got one leg. You're gonna fall, you're gonna fall on top of me. You're gonna kill me. It tried to steady itself by planting a hand on the shelf. Its head rose up and up and up. My days, I said, you're huge. God save our gracious queen. And loud, you're really, really loud. The shelves shook in their boxes, lost teeth shattered. shattered. The mislaid coffin shuddered as if the body was going to climb out of it. Lost luggage trembled. Suddenly it let go of the shelf and nodded its head 
At least it was a nod to start with, but then it became a topple. Eyes flashed, teeth blazed, mouth roared, Long live our noble king! Its massive face was crashing towards me, and something cr flashed across my brain. Something familiar. What was it? Oh yes, that was it. The absolute extreme of fear.